welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, <coughs> management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 677. Welcome to 2021. Uh, I think we were all, all happy to see 2020 end, right? And we all made it. So that's really cool. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I realized that it's been, uh, 2020 was 40 years ago is when I became a dentist. So what I thought we'd talk about is what was dentistry like in 1980? What has changed? What do we offer today that we couldn't offer in 1980? And so in order to do that, I'm going to give you a retrospective of back in 1980 to kind of set the tone. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. Okay, and for those of you that are joining me, thank you. I appreciate that. In about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. I'll give you the number now. Don't call yet. But the number is 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. Okay. So uh, let me just give you a little time capsule of 1980 so we can, like, like I said, set the tone. The world population was 4,458,411,000 and some change. That's about oh, a little bit less than half of what we are now. The U.S. population was 227 million, and now we're about 330 million. Popular TV shows were MASH, Dukes of Hazard, 60 Minutes, Dallas, and The Love Boat. The president was Jimmy Carter, although he was about to be, um, his, his, uh, the election was happening, uh, he was looking for re-election, um, and you might remember that Reagan became the president in 1981. Historical events, the Rubik's Cube puzzle created by Ernold Rubik started selling. Cable New Network News, CNN, officially launched. The U.S. Olympic Committee, I'm sorry, the U.S. hockey team defeats the Soviet Union in the medal round of the Winter Olympics in the Miracle on Ice. I remember what I was doing when that happened. Pac-Man, the best-selling arcade game of all time, was released. Get this, stars that were born back in 1980, Kim Kardashian. If we could have just gone back another year. <laughs> wouldn't have that anyway uh katie leblanc channing tatum nick cannon and shay carler butler i don't know a couple of those popular songs were call me by blondie pink floyd another brick in the wall part two uh, magic by olivia newton john rock with you michael jackson do that to me one more time captain and Tennille. the philadelphia phillies won the world series pittsburgh steelers the super bowl la lakers won the nba championship and the New York Islanders won the Stanley Cup. Oscar winners, actor Kramer versus Kramer, Dustin Hoffman, Sally Fields for Norma Ray, and um, the best picture was Kramer versus Kramer, by the way. Okay, here's an interesting thing. I always like to talk about this. An average house was $76,375. An average new car was $7,573. Average salary, $18,991. A postage stamp was 15 cents. They're 55 now. A dozen eggs, a dollar three. A gallon of milk, a dollar sixty. So that kind of sets the tone. And by the way, what I've kind of figured out is it seems like everything's three times more expensive now than it was in 1980. If you just look at a car, you know, well, maybe even cars are more expensive because the average one was 7,500. I don't know that you can get a car for 22,000. Very many of them, at least right now. But anyway, oh, and also. 
in the 80s. Well, not just 1980, because that was 1980, but let me just kind of mention in the 80s decade, uh, we already mentioned the Rubik's Cube. Uh, the Royal Wedding was uh, 1981. That was Diana and Charles. Uh, the first artificial heart, 1982. And that's interesting because the second artificial heart was Dr. Barney Clark, who was a dentist. Now, those, they didn't work. They actually stopped trying to do it because the body kept rejecting them, throwing blood clots and causing strokes, and, and um, the people were dying. The first Martin Luther King Day, 1983. did not realize that it hadn't been going on any longer than that. The Summer Olympics in Los Angeles um, in 1984. The Titanic wreckage was discovered in 1985. Uh, the Challenger disaster, 1986. Wall Street crash was in 1987, and World AIDS Day, 1988. Okay, so let's uh, compare. Let's bring some little dentistry into the into the show. And so, in 1980, we placed silver fillings. They're called amalgams. Some people call them mercury fillings now because it was determined that uh, maybe some of that mercury was leaching into people. And so back, uh, so we did uh, silver fillings in back teeth. Now, we had a tooth-colored filling. It's a composite, but it wasn't very strong, and it would wash out quickly. And so if we were going to place a filling in a cuspid, um, uh, a cuspid of the corner teeth, and it was the back half, we would put silver there. It wouldn't be noticeable very much, but it would hold the arch, so to speak. So when the back teeth wanted to push forward, they'd have that strong silver filling there because the tooth-colored ones were really weak. The other thing that would happen is that when we started switching over to uh, tooth-colored fillings in back teeth, they, like I said, they were weak, they uh, dissolved easily, they let cavities get started, and almost everybody that had them got a new cavity in that same spot. Now, uh, we did removable partial dentures if you were missing back teeth. So if there was no tooth to hook to to put a, a bridge in, your only option was to have a removable partial. Now, removable partial dentures are full of these metal wires and clips and rest seats that um, attach to the teeth, or that rather slip over the teeth, but they were pretty ugly. But if you had no back teeth, there was no other option for us. Why? Because we hadn't yet figured out dental implants, at least not very well. There were some things called uh, blade implants, endosseous blade implants, which was a metal, kind of a metal, a piece of, oh, metal, a rectangular piece of metal with a, think of it as a post attached to it. Okay? So, uh, the surgeons would split the top of the ridge, of the mandible ridge, and tap this thing down in between the two halves. Like you would, like when you would, uh, if you're going to split wood, you have this little wedge and you tap it down into the wood. The wood doesn't completely split in half yet, but your wedge is stuck in there. So they would put these little wedge-shaped um, um, pieces of metal that were titanium down in there, and that would give a back tooth. But that was, uh, that was only... Uh, it was early, and it was only for, like, um, uh, back teeth. You couldn't do it for front teeth. You know, they were, it had, you had to be missing a lot of teeth, let's put it that way. We didn't have individual dental implants yet. And so um, people were stuck with these partials. All right, another thing in 1980, we had nitrous oxide oxygen sedation. And we also had oral sedation, but it wasn't very prevalent. And IV sedation for a regular appointment, like a filling or a cleaning or even a root canal, was really uncommon. It was hard to find an office, a dentist, that could do that. So, you know, 1980, think about that, the, those uh, crappy silver fillings that stained your teeth and they looked ugly. They looked like cavities if you saw them. And um, so back at, also back then, um, we did, if we needed a crown, if you needed a crown, we had gold crowns. We had gold onlays. We had this thing called porcelain fused to metal crown, which was supposed to be the most aesthetic thing that we could do. And it was the most aesthetic thing we could do back then. But you had metal. So in order to hide the metal, we had to put an opaque, or the lab had to put a, an opaque layer over the metal. And that opaquer was not very translucent. It looked dead. It looked ugly. It didn't, wasn't vibrant at all. It was better than what we had, which was just the yellow gold, okay, prior to that. But still not great, but it was uh, certainly uh, better than the uh, alternative. But boy, compared to today, man, were they ugly and, you know, lifeless and even worse than lifeless. So we didn't have, uh, we didn't have all porcelain crowns yet. We hadn't invented porcelain veneers yet in 1980. 
40 years ago. There were no same-day crowns yet, like the Syrac that we do, where we can make your crown while you wait, and instead of coming back in three weeks to get your crown and having to deal with it temporary for three weeks, we make your crown while you wait. We didn't have that back then. And there was no zirconia. Zirconia is a kind of porcelain that um, uh, is super strong. It's very dense. It looks on an x-ray like it's metal, and yet it's all porcelain. Everything about it is white. And the advantage of it being so strong is it can be super thin and still be strong. So in cases where there isn't a lot of room or wasn't a lot of room between the upper tooth and the bottom tooth that we're working on, or vice versa, um, we can use zirconia porcelain and still have it look, look super nice. It still looks great. So that's a little retrospective. Uh, we're going to cover more of these as we go. But um, uh, I think what we're probably going to do now is we're, we talked about doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Oh, it looks like we have another minute. You know what? We'll do it early. That way we can just be done and not have to think about it <laughs> and be in the middle of another topic and, uh, and not have, uh, uh, not have to inter interrupt myself. So you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Before we do, though, we need you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's Question of the Day. Okay, and like I said, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Here's the question. Today we're talking about what has changed in dentistry since I started my practice 40 years ago in 1980. Um, what are some of the things that we were doing in 1980? A, we no longer, I'm sorry, what's the difference between 1980 and now? A, we no longer place silver fillings. B, we have many sedation options to help you through your visit. C, we now have implants to offer you, but in 1980, there were only a few blade implants being done. Or D, all of the above. All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hi, this is Keith Carlos, former NFL player, actor, and first male winner of America's Next Top Model. I got a question for you. Do you know how many dentists there are between here and Los Angeles? Well, I don't know either, but I fly over every one of them just to see Dr. Kavico on a regular basis. Check out my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on my Instagram page, at Keith Carlos. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most compassionate dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Are you tired of hearing what every business is doing to keep you safe? Well, me too, because they're all saying the same thing. Wearing masks, washing our hands often, and social distancing are the keys to keeping us healthy, and all businesses are doing that. But here at Dr. Kavitko & Associates, we do that and more. We have continuous air and surface pathogen reduction units inside our office that kill over 93% of the coronavirus and other pathogens. I bet you can't name another dental office that does that, give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavitko and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavitko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavitko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. 
888-5588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko is here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have Patty. Hi, Patty. How are you today? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for calling in. What is the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? I think the answer is D, which was all of the above. Absolutely correct. Yep. We no longer place silver fillings. We have more sedation options, and we now have implants, individual teeth. All right. Hey, Patty, what do you do for a living? Um, I work in IT. IT. Boy, I could use your help some of these mornings trying to make this <laughs> this thing work. <laughs> and I'm yeah, not talking about my producer. I'm talking about when I do the video part of the show. So anyway, yeah, it is, <laughs> it's a pain, it's right? It's frustrating at yeah. times. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. Okay. Well, you have a great day and watch for those flowers from DeSantis, okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Everybody else that called, please call back next week. All right. So if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 677. And what we're doing is a retrospect looking back uh, into 1980, which is when I became a dentist, started my practice. And so what we're talking about are the kinds of things that we uh, can do now that we couldn't do back then. But we're also doing it as a way of a kind of a, a time capsule, if you will, for 1980. And so in addition to the things that I've already talked about for 1980, let me just mention that on up. On April 12th of 1980, the U.S. Olympic Committee voted to boycott the Summer Olympics in Moscow in response to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Also, December 8th of that year, Mark David Chapman murdered John Lennon outside the Dakota Hotel in New York City. Uh, the musical Cats debuted on Broadway on October 8th. Well, that was 1982. Okay, we're trying to focus on 1980. Although I guess it's kind of still neat. I'm going to go ahead with this list because, first of all, Cats has been around so long, I thought it was around forever. <laughs> I thought it must have been around from 1958 or something. But anyway, this one's interesting. Apple Computer launches its Macintosh computer in 1984. So Apple, as we know it, started in 1984. Isn't that weird? And uh, it's been so much a part of our life since then. Uh, Chris Van Allsburg's, or Allsburg's Polar Ex The Polar Express uh, wins the 1986 Caldecott Award. Um, Sylvester Stallone stars in the 1988's Rambo 3, following the su success of Rambo First Blood 82 and Rambo First Blood Part 2 85, 1985. And best-selling author Tom Clancy concludes a successful decade with the publication of Clear and Present Danger in 1989. These follow his previous bestsellers of The Hunt for Red October, Red Storm Rising, Patriot Games, and the Cardinals of the Cardinal of the Kremlin. All of those, I think, were turned into movies. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty prolific. And then one more, Mount St. Helens. This is 1980. On May 18th, 1980, a massive eruption of Mount St. Helens devastated hundreds of square miles of Skamania and Cowlitz counties, Washington, killing 57 people, destroying forests, lakes, highways, and homes, and spewing an estimated 550 million tons of ash into the Earth's atmosphere. Despite the passage of 40 years, the scarred landscape surrounding the volcano remains a testament to the power of the May 18th eruption. I still remember that. And that's the only like blast-type volcano that I've lived through. We've seen the ones in, uh, in Mount Kilauea in Hawaii, where it's kind of the slow burn, if you will, you know, but the one that, that blast one, which we all fear, like um, Pompeo, um, happened in our lifetime. Okay, so let's get back to some of the dentistry things that we want to talk about in the 1980s. So, there were no lasers capable of cutting enamel or dentin back in 1980. Now, I was told by one of my patients back then who was a physicist who got his PhD by, uh, and his thesis was about the effect of the atmosphere on light between 533 nanometers and 535. Just think about how technical that is. His research was so uh, successful that NASA requested copies of it so they could help, it would help them understand why when they would shoot for the moon, for example, they'd be off by, you know, 16 miles. Okay? So that, what is that? Why am I telling you that story? 
this guy's pretty smart, right? So this really smart guy told me that there's no way we would ever come up with a laser that could cut enamel or dentin because the intensity of the beam would have to be so high that if we moved it off the enamel for even a split second, we would cut through the gum, cut through the bone, and cut through the floor. Pretty dangerous, right? So he was pretty sure that that was never going to happen. So I believed him because of his pedigree there. Somehow, people, they figured it out because <laughs> I have a laser that cuts dentin and enamel. It actually numbs your tooth. It's called the Saleo. We shine it on your tooth for 30 seconds. It will numb that tooth, just that one tooth, kind of like um, temporary paresthesia for maybe uh, seven to 10 minutes. So I can uh, remove the decay, uh, remove a little extra to make sure the filling is locked in properly. And I didn't have to use a needle. Isn't that cool? And for those of you that are watching the, uh, um, the, uh, this on the reasons we smell.com, you're seeing the explosion of Mount St. Helen there uh, pictured. Okay, so now there was something else I wanted to mention. Oh, okay, so let's, uh, let me just explain a little bit about his research about, you know, the effect of the atmosphere on, uh, on light. Remember, I said NASA might be off by 16, 15 miles. Well, you know how when we look in a fishbowl, how the light refracts? We all have seen that. You look here and the fish is over there. Well, it's the same thing. Our atmosphere does the same thing uh, to our instruments here on Earth as we try to look out of our fishbowl, so to speak. So there is a little refraction there, and they had to figure out just how much so they could factor that into their calculations. Before I came on the air, me and my producer were trying to figure out exactly what moment and second we were going to start based on the previous show and that sort of thing. And um, it's, it's tough math at, uh, you know, 8.30 in the morning. And <laughs> so just think of the NASA guys, how they had to do it. Okay, so then the other thing, the next thing would be we had not yet invented or figured out in 1980 there was no such thing as sub-epithelial connective tissue grafting. We did have what was called free gingival grafting, not because it was free, but because we would take a piece of the roof of the mouth, just peel off a little piece, and we would stitch it down to a tooth where the root was exposed. And it would, it would never actually cover the root, but it would create like this little zone of, of attached tissue, the kind that you can brush with the toothbrush and not hurt. But it never looked right. It never, it wasn't cosmetic at all. And I did those for several years. But then luckily, 30, maybe 35 years ago, something close, um, somebody came up with what is called sub-epithelial connective tissue grafting, where we still go to the palate, but we don't take the outside layer off. We take the underlying tissue, which is the connective tissue under the epithelial uh, lining, and we stitch that to the tooth root. And it looks like it never happened. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. You should see what we can do for you, folks. It's really neat. And it's one of my favorite procedures because everybody's happy when they look in their mouth and see how gorgeous their, um, their, their teeth and gums now look. Okay. Back then, also in 1980, you remember the phrase metal mouth? When you had braces, you had metal mouth. Why? Because they put a metal band around every single tooth. Why was the metal band around every single tooth? Because they had to have a bracket on it so that the wire could attach to this bracket and move the tooth. Well, that was before I was back when we were still using silver fillings and back before we had the resin, uh, uh, filling materials that would actually work over a long time of period. I mean, but what happened over time is now we have those same resins have been improved and we can use them to bond clear brackets to your tooth rather than having a metal band and a metal bracket. We can have a clear porcelain bracket. And we bond that to your tooth, so you're no longer metal mouth. And on top of that, we have uh, the wire is now um, coated with a white coating, so it's uh, almost invisible when you smile. And if you're thinking about getting your teeth straightened, now while we're wearing masks would be a good idea. In fact, we had a special that ended at December 31st, but uh, you can still come in and get us, have us straighten your teeth, because nobody's going to know you're doing it. You're wearing your mask. And then when we can finally take these masks off, you're going to smile and people go, wow, I don't remember how beautiful your smile was. They're not going to know you had your teeth straightened. They're just going to think they forgot. Okay, so it looks like it's time for me to go to a break. We have many more of these when we come back. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am Not just a little bit I don't know who to be I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea I know you see it too because you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? 
Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Burn my glasses. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode 677. We're talking about what kind of dentistry we were able to provide for you in 1980 and how it compares to today. I'm also trying to give you some uh, historical landmarks to identify 1980. Another one is that the aerial boat lift begins from Cuba. A number of uh, Cuban uh, folks escaping Cuba uh, from the dictatorship. And um, that was a big, big event back then. Uh, Voyager 1 in March of 1980. Voyager 1 probe confirms the existence of, the existence of Janus, a moon of Saturn. Also, uh, BET, Black Entertainment Television, launched in 1980, along with CNN. Okay, let's talk dentistry. <laughs> After all, I'm a dentist, but I think it's cool to look back. All right, so... Um, there was no bone grafting available in 1980, or very little. So if you had a tooth out and your sinus, uh, maxillary sinus came down or the bone resorbed and you needed an implant, you were pretty much out of luck. Again, you'd have to wear one of those parcels with the metal clips. Um, there was no sinus, uh, there was no sinus lifting. So I kind of combined those two, didn't I? So yeah, on the lower arch, if your bone had resorbed and you wanted to have an implant there and there wasn't room between the outside world and the nerve, again, you were stuck. You'd have to wear a parcel. And on the upper, even today, the maxillary sinus gets in our way a lot, but we have ways now of lifting that sinus membrane, putting bone under, underneath it, right below it, and um, making sure that there's plenty of bone for an implant. So now we can, all, it's almost magic what we can do now. It really is. And I love showing people x-rays of the ones that we've done, especially those tricky ones. Um, there were no cone beam machines back then, no cone beam scan machines. You hear about how your TV has pixels, well, our cone beam machine has voxels, which are three-dimensional pixels. So each one, rather than being a dot, like on your television, is, it looks like a sugar cone. It's a, it, it, yeah, it looks like a sugar cone. I guess that's the best way to, and what that does is it allows us, just like in CT scans, allows us to pan through with the image from top to bottom, from right to left, from front to back, and we can see everything we need to see. Where is the sinus? Where is the nerve? How much bone do we have within a, within a micron? They weren't available in 1980, so if it looked like the sinus was close or we didn't know, we just wouldn't do anything. Dental offices weren't yet computerized. I still remember the pegboard. We had the pegboard NCR pages, and then we had uh, ledger cards where these pieces of cardboard that would sit over top, and you would write out what the person's charges were on that, and the carbon would cover on, go on to the one below, and those became our sheets. Just really talk about archaic, <laughs> looking back at that. And by the way, my checkbook uh, folder is still a pegboard because I just I just never replaced it. Um, and I write a lot of checks, so I can't use that little one like most people use. And I can't just do the uh, online thing because there's too many entries and too many things coming out of that account. But yeah, isn't that interesting? Um, we took x-rays in 1980 using what is called D-speed film made by Kodak. And we developed them in tanks either uh, hand tanks or what was called a Peri Pro, which was an automatic developer. And there were a couple other brands. And we would hold these little x-rays up to the light. It's amazing that even when I look back today that I could even read them. Because I've looked at them the other day, how little they are. It's just amazing. Um, we didn't yet have rotary endo, meaning rotary endodontics, where we have these little uh, these drills and these files that actually can go around a corner and not break. 
it was it's really cool it's really revolutionized the ability of us dentists to do root canals and we also didn't yet have the microscopes that a lot of endodontists like to use in fact you'll notice endodontists tend to call themselves microsurgeons because they uh, uh, they're using microscopes I tried the microscope didn't really help me all that much but they like it so good for them <laughs> Anyway, so that, that's uh, kind of a comparison to dentistry back in 1980 and dentistry today. Let me just uh, leave you with a couple more fun facts, if I can find them. Um, let's see here. The comic strip, The Far Side, debuted in newspapers in 1980 in January. Isn't that cool? And um, let's see here. What else do we have? The, the Department of Education began its operations. I thought uh, Empire Strikes Back was released. Wow, pretty cool. Looks like I'm out of time. Um, I know we got a little early start, so I certainly don't want to end late and, and uh, screw up my producer's timing for the rest of the day. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really do. Uh, let me just say that that is all the time we have. So don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to go to my office Facebook page and like us. Uh, and um, check out all of the episodes of The Reasons We Smile on the um on the reasons we smile.com okay be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station goodbye This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588.